key government regulations every judge expects small business owners to know. Small business owners have to digest a lot when it comes to government regulations. Find out key guidelines that federal and state judges expect business owners to know and comply with. If you are an entrepreneur or a small business owner, keep in mind that claiming ignorance of the law is no excuse. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I hope you are doing fantastic today. I'm doing marvelous if you are to ask me. If you are doing as brilliant as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. <laughs> today, we are having a conversation around the key government regulations every judge expects small business owners to know. Number one, privacy. So businesses with staff and employees, they would they want to gathering a ton of sensitive personal info about their employees. Consequently, there are myriad rules and regulations around how employers must safeguard and secure the data. So for instance, if your small business discloses an employee's private information, I mean, credit card numbers, health conditions, address, name, social security number, or personal history, not only do various laws exist to keep businesses from spreading this information, but employees can sue for disclosing sensitive data. For instance, we have something called HIPAA. You probably heard about that, the Health Insurance Port Portability and Accountability Act, HIPAA. That law specifically pro prohibits the release of health data without a patient's permission. Now, although employees have clear rights to privacy in the workplace, those rights are also balanced against the employer's privileges to monitor their business operations. Right, so the legislator had made sure that there are there is a there is a, a good balance that has been struck. So you gotta understand what rights you have as a business to monitor employees and to be clear about monitor that monitoring to your employees. You have to be clear and transparent here. Two, antitrust laws. Now, what is an antitrust? Antitrust an antitrust antitrust um Behavior is basically when a company conspires with its rivals, third party vendors or other relevant parties to basically fix market price, do some price discrimination or boycott a lot of things. So now here are the issues that antitrust laws strive to address, at, you know, so conspiring to fix market prices. In other words, a company is discussing prices with competitors even even if it, it affects a small marketplace so the whole thing about antitrust is not just for big companies we always hear this in the media we think this is only for no, no. antitrust applies antitrust laws applies even on a small marketplace if you have price discrimination for example securing favorable product prices from buyers when other companies can conspiring to boycott if you if two or three businesses two or more businesses have conversations regarding the potential boycott of another competitor or supplier all of this stuff constitutes things that antitrust laws are fighting for or are banning rather conspiring to allocate markets or customers so this is this means agreements between competitors to divide up customers territories or markets all this are illegal this provision applies even when the competitors do not dominate the particular market or industry. So what I'm trying to say here is that before, for the law to apply, it doesn't matter if we have a monopoly and uh, an oligopoly or free market. As long as you have people conspiring to allocate markets or customers, antitrust laws will apply. You have another law, another negative behavior that any law, any law, Antitrust laws will penalize people for is monopolization. So preserving a monopoly position through the acquisition of competitors, the exclusion of competitors to the given market or the control of market prices. So if your company runs afoul of any of these regulations, the Federal Trade Commission might contact you, the FTC. Three, email marketing. Email marketing is closely monitored. And email marketing and um, advertising are interrelated if you think about it. 
So if your business engages directly or indirectly in email marketing, there are several regulations you need to comply with under the Kane, the Kane Spam Act, right? So things that this act regulates include you don't use false or misleading headers. You don't use deceptive headlines. You don't indicate that the, you have to indicate rather that the message is an ad. This is a commercial, whatever. You need to include your business name and address, and you have to show the customer how to opt out of emails and honor the opt out request promptly. Now, remember that each separate email violation is subject to hefty fines. So your company wants to make sure that the, you, you, that all the personnel know the ins and outs of this law before you step up your email marketing strategy. This is why sometimes you would see when you receive a newsletter at the bottom of the, at the bottom of the email, you have the company's address and you have the little link that tells you, you you can actually opt out. If you don't want to receive this sort of email anymore, you can unsubscribe. This is because of the Kane Spam Act. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Q. We are still having a wonderful conversation here around um, key government regulations every judge expects small business owners to know. Let's talk now about the tax code. But before I do this, please consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already done so. We drop new shows every single day and we love this kind of content. We have a variety of uh, content to explore and uh, turn on the notification bell so you are aware the next time we drop a show and you can promptly participate. Also share this content, like, comment below and share with us your experience when it comes to government regulations. Are you a small business owner yourself? Let us know. Now the tax code. Now. A lot of people, a lot of business owners know that when it comes to uh, government regulations, you always start with taxes, right? Now, there, there is more than taxes that, that, you know, when it comes to taxes, it's not just about paying them. You have to also plan for taxes. You have to basically uh, account for taxes, right? Every company registered in the United States has to pay federal taxes. Most companies will also have to pay state taxes depending on the state in which the company is registered. Now, these taxes are unavoidable. So avoiding taxes or deciding not to pay them outright comes with hefty penalties and potential jail time. We've heard about a lot of celebrities who went to jail because they failed to pay taxes on time, right? Now, the kinds of taxes you are paying depends on how you formed your business in the first place. So let me just explain this. Not all businesses are treated the same when it comes to taxes. For example, a sole proprietorship pays taxes differently than, say, an SC corporation or an S corporation. Let me quickly give you a list of uh, the different taxes for business structures to help you determine what your business needs to file. Income tax. Now, most businesses file an annual income tax return, right? So businesses must pay income tax as they earn and receive income, and then they have to file a tax return at the end of the year. You also have something called estimated tax. So those estimated tax payments are, they offer, if you think about it, an alternative to paying income tax throughout the year as your company earns money. So every quarter, you just send a check to the IRS, so you're, you're fine. Right. So and this applies to partners, so partnerships, as corporation, sole proprietors, they usually must make estimated tax payments. So if you expect, let's say you expect to owe ten thousand dollars when you file your return by April 15th of the following year, just divide the ten thousand by four. That would be twenty five hundred and send a check to the IRS every quarter. Let's say you send a check on January, January um, 15th, and then April 15th, and then July 15th, and then September 15th. So you basically are sending a little bit of money. If you don't do this, they are going to, the IRS will charge you a penalty. They will penalize you. You have also unemployment tax. Companies that have employees are expected to pay taxes related to having staff on the payroll, right? So here I'm talking Medicare taxes, Social Security, 
federal income tax withholding and federal unemployment tax. You also have in some cases excise taxes. Those are paid when your business makes purchases on specific goods and are often included in the price of the products. One common example of excise tax is the purchase of, ga uh, of gas, gasoline, right? Where applicable taxes are baked into the price per gallon rather than as a tally at the end of the transaction. So you may be under certain excise tax law if you manufacture or sell certain goods, you use certain kinds of uh, equipment or you receive payments for certain kinds of services and much more. Now, some businesses, and this is very good to know, also have to collect sales taxes. Number five, insurance. So insurance is kind of critical to a small business or a large business for that matter. As soon as you hire your first staff member, you are legally obligated to buy workers' compensation insurance. Now, in the United States, only Texas does not require, require businesses with employees to purchase workers' comp insurance. This kind of insurance, workers' compensation insurance, protects both you and your employee in the case of an accident on the job. Right, so the employee will, will receive medical care and compensation for some of the income they lose while injured, while injured, and uh, the insurance company will defray the cost of any lawsuit filed by the injured worker. So other types of insurance generally generally unrequired, but it depends on the circumstances. It also depends on your particular company, right? For example, if your business contracts with the government or gets a government guaranteed loan, then the company might need to show proof of certain types of insurance. The environment next. So environmental regulations. You might also want to familiarize yourself with various environmental protection laws depending on your industry or business. This is important because this is important for certain sectors compared to others. Let's say for instance, if you are selling cleaning products, you are selling food or you're selling anything with claims to be natural, organic, or eco-friendly. You'll find dozens of uh, environmental rules and regulations that might affect your small business, but both at the federal and state level. Now, we have, um, if you go to the EPA website, they have a small business gateway. That's a great resource to make sure your business is in compliance with environmental law. So you want to tap www.epa.gov and inquire more. I'll be right after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We are having a conversation here and continuing the conversation around the key government regulations every judge expects small business owners to know. Let's talk now about uh, employment and, and labor law. There, when it comes to labor, everything around wages and hours, workplace safety and health, equal opportunity. You, the, the, there, are, there are laws around hiring non-US citizen workers. You have unions, family and medical leave, posters, all of this are, are very important. When it comes to wages and law, you need to have you need to be aware of something called the Fair Labor Standards Act, FILSA, which prescribes standards for wages and overtime pay. When it comes to workplace safety and health, you want to think about OSHA rules, right? OSHA stands for Occupational Safety and Health Administration. This act, this agency requires that employers under the OSHA Act provide their employees with work and a workplace free from recognized serious hazards. The OSHA, the OSHA Act is enforced through workplace inspection and investigation, right? Now, one thing you also have to be very careful about is that if you are hiring non-U.S. citizen workers and you want to make sure they are legit, right? Because the federal government mandates that employers must verify that their employees have permission to work legally in the United States. There are several employment categories, each with different requirements conditions and authorized periods of stay for those employees right if they're if they're not legal residents or citizens they need to have a like their visa has to 
give them a certain period of time to stay within the country. All right. So you want to pay attention to that advertising. Now, a good advertising advertising strategy can do wonders for your business. But you want to make sure that you're paying attention to some of the laws that govern advertising. So you want to com comply with labeling laws for consumer products. In other words, you have to list out ingredients and chemicals within your products. You have to know the specific rules for advertising and selling products on the Internet. You want to understand the rules for advertising, for example, specific products. And this is uh, this include this runs the whole gamut from alcoholic beverages to 1-800 numbers to 900 numbers. You want to pay attention to factors that affect your specific industry or where working with a lawyer who knows the rules around your business will really benefit you. Either way, you want to understand the rules for marketing and advertising over the phone or via email. Now, the next we have number nine, you need to collect sales taxes. Now, this is a key government regulations because a lot of uh, states derive their revenue from sales taxes. So most businesses that sell physical goods, they must collect the sales tax from customers and submit the tax to their state's, state's revenue department. Now, in the union, there are some states, that, a few states that do not collect sales tax. For example, you have uh, Alaska, Delaware, Montana, New Hampshire, or Oregon. You don't need to collect sales taxes from them because those states don't have sales taxes. So another thing you want to do here is that online sellers, you have to remember that online sellers also might have to collect sales tax in any states that they sell to. All right. So it's not about having been online or offline. You still have to pay the, the taxes. I'll be right back, but after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We are still talking here about uh, key government regulations every judge expects small business owners to know. And if you love the clarity and the quality of the content so far, please consider subscribing to our channel and turn on the notification bell so you, you can be informed in real time whenever we drop a new show. Also, like this content, share, and comment below. Number 10, licensing and permits. Now, we've talked a lot about federal laws and government regulations on business so far, right? But there are still state regulations to consider for your small business. Many states and local government have their own requirements for businesses, and they're just as important to understand as their federal counterparts, right? For example, do you need a business license? Indeed, in many states and localities, you don't you do need a business license to operate. You need that. You need that license. This can be particularly important for businesses in heavily regulated industries such as healthcare or health. Without the proper licenses, states can fine your business or even revoke your authority to operate. So it's very important to be aware of that regul of that regulation of that uh, licensing regulation. Another, another regulation you need to pay attention to is reporting pay data. So if you employed, for example, more than 100 people or more than 50, if you are a federal contractor, you are required to report how much you pay each of them. And you have to break this down by uh, race slash nationality or ethnicity, job category and gender. And you have to report this to the Equal, Opportunity, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission each year. And this is actually a great way because it ensures that you are complying with uh, federal non-discrimination laws. That is that you're not paying a woman significantly less than a man with the exact, exactly the same job titles and responsibilities. Right. So this is it. All right, folks. Thank you very much for listening to today's conversation. And uh, here are the key government regulations. Every judge expects small business owners to know privacy, antitrust laws, email marketing, tax code, insurance, environmental regulations, employment and labor law, advertising, collecting sales tax, licensing and permits, reporting pay data. All right, folks, thank you very much. I will speak to you next time. Until then, remember, stay.
Marvelous.